everybody and welcome to this Jubilee Friday. If you're not from around these parts and you don't know uh, quite what's going on, it's just a little local celebration thing. If there's one thing that we have to do, I bid you charge your glasses. The Queen, God bless her. Right, that's got that out of the way. Now, before we get into the uh, the main character, as it were, a few pieces here to uh, to entertain you, I think. Right, uh, I don't think I'm going to give this guy's name, to be honest. But anyway, it says, Hi there, my name is Beep. I live in Cairns, Queensland, Australia. I originally came from London. I've watched a few films on uh, England, the countryside. And I went on the internet, saw your film of you walking around your village, and that's made my mind up. I'm coming home, and I will try to find a house in or around a village. Thank you. Blimey. Uh, well, if I were you, beep, uh, I'd come back and take a look around first, because you might remember why you left in the first place. So, you know. <laughs> yes, oh, blimey. Uh, now, Sally Bush. Sally Bush uh, wrote in. And she was writing in on the uh, film we did of uh, Chepstow, all around the Chepstow area. And uh, they take him every year because it's such a lovely place. So thank you for this video. I showed my dad. My dad has Parkinson's and he also has dementia. When we watched your video, he remembered. He remembered everything. So thank you for making our day. Isn't that wonderful? Now, you guys got to take a bow with that. And if you weren't watching these videos, I wouldn't be making them. And Sally's dad wouldn't have had the pleasure. Uh, well done, guys. Perfect. Right, now then. Let's get into our main, uh, our main subject. Subjects. Uh, we start off with uh, views from the combine harvesters. So you might remember on the back of the last flight side. Excuse me, but this Robin is darting around everywhere here. They're too quick to film. They keep getting in the way. Anyway, right, okay. Uh, so you might remember at the end of our last vlog we had Ange Cutler out with his I got a combine har har brand new combine harvester. Did I get that in the end? <laughs> Ange Cutler and I've got a brand new combine harvester and I'll give you the key. Lionel and Mary travels. Still got a good uh, sight down there. He says combine harvesters. I drove one of those for many years in my younger days. This will be Lionel then. Now they have GPS. In my day, it took total concentration for hours on end. A huge machine. You've got to keep the, the cutting blades up, I suppose, so you don't hit any debris, but you've got to make sure that you cut the uh, the crop as low as you can get. Wow, nice. Jim Nichols, Australia. No, he's not. Jim Nichols is from the other one, didn't he? New Zealand. Sorry about that, Jim. Mis misplaced you there for a while. <laughs> You can't beat an English garden. Yeah, we had some few shots of the garden around here. You know, it's amazing. Everybody says the same thing, but really, this is just a little small garden. But if you concentrate on certain areas, you can make it look really good. Tip for you there. He said, I love the song. Haven't heard that one for many, many years. No, oh, good old Jim. Right. Andrew Merriman. Our Andrew, always into facts and figures as our Andrew. I enjoyed Film Club. I remember buying the Wurzels Combine Harvester and in brackets brand new key, we'll get to that in a minute, in 1976 from a pal in Birmingham who worked in a record shop. Record shop, do you remember those? Blimey. It made number one on the 12th of June 1976 and stayed at the top the following week. Well, I'm blown. Thanks for that, Andrew. Poor Boyle. Ah, yes, Adge Cutler and the Wurzels. Nail sees finest, he says. One of their other efforts was about muck spreading, I seem to recall. Yeah, the champion muck spreader. Let's see if I can work that in somewhere. Charles Patterson. I love that farming song, The Combine Harvester. In brackets again, brand new key. By the Wurzels. But I could have sworn the lyrics went, I got a brand new pair of roller skates. You've got a brand new key. As sung by Mel Melanie Safka. I hope I got that right. Melanie Safka over 50 years ago. Wow, so it was an adaption, was it? I wonder who adapted from who? Oh, very good. James Weeks, our James from Canada. <laughs> Here we go. 
Being somewhat at a loss for further entertainment after watching your vlog, Push Off Robin, you can't come in here, I decided to search up Combine songs. And it turns out there are quite a few, which I find somewhat strange. I mean, it's a piece of farm machinery after all. <laughs> You've got no soul, James. Anyway, off to search up songs on other equipment. Cream separator, I think, to start with. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> I think that comes under the heading of don't phone us, we'll phone you. <laughs> Good old James. Ah, oh, dear. Michael from Poland. Poor old Michael from Poland. Hope things are settled over there with you, Michael. Greetings from Poland. Your garden is beautiful. My wife is really envious and is complaining that our postage stamp plot should be looking like yours. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> the problem is, Ronnie says, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. When I'm right, I'm still wrong. I think I'll stick to watering. I'm good at that. <laughs> good old Michael. Right, David Bellani from... Oh, yes, I don't care. Look, I'm trying to record it. Push off. David Bellani, our Spanish correspondent. Ron, thanks for showing your garden. Our rose bushes are being hyperproductive this year. I didn't know you had rose bushes over there, else it'd be too hot for them. Oh, that's brilliant. And the lemon tree is doing well. We didn't get any the last couple of years. They're going to need, they're going to need water in this weekend, as we will be touching 40 degrees. Blimey. David, well. Simon, the hairy golfer. Well, oh, here we go. Uh, he's got trouble with his lawn. And uh, he's talking to me about it. And I said, well, we got rid of our lawn. We've just got gravel now. He says, is it difficult mowing gravel? <laughs> no, son, you don't. You'll forget it. <laughs> right. Peter Smith says, there's a blackbird out here popping about now. They, they won't stay still long enough to film them. Ron, has someone reduced the number of days in a week while I wasn't looking? I don't think so, Peter. I swear there used to be seven, but now there's more like five till you come round again. Can't get enough of a good thing there then, Peter. Enjoyed the chat and the comments. I only wish that I could think of something profound to add to them. You don't need to, Peter. Just just comment. We don't mind. We'll take whatever you whatever you want to send. Perfect. We don't mind. Jim Nichols. Right. We're now on the film of uh, Portsmouth. So I went to the visit around Portsmouth, and I, I didn't know we had so many salty sea dogs uh, in our audience, as it were. Jim says. Brought back a lot of memories. Portsmouth was the jumping off point over 70 years ago Christ, for a Sunday school annual outing for which we say threepence a week. When we caught the steam powered paddle steamer to the Isle of Wight, what a thrill that was. Yeah, wow. And it still would be today, wouldn't it? I don't know what happened to the old thing. I think the only steam powered paddle steamer we got going now is the Waverley. I'm not sure if that's still afloat. Uh, Michael Miller says, thanks Ron, I visited the dockyard some years ago with my dad when he lived at Gosport. Thanks for the reminder of Portsmouth and Southsea. You're most welcome, Michael, and that's what we're all about here, are memories. Dig up those old memories, get them out there, give them an airing. Michael from Poland again. You made an old sea dog very, very happy. Michael was in the Navy. Completely different from when I was there. My base was across the other side of the harbour entrance at HMS Dolphin. Gun Wharf Keys was HMS Vernon, and all those old buildings in the dockyard were still in use. God, wow. Lovely. Well done, Michael. Martin Hall. Hello, Ron. Just watched your video about Portsmouth Dockyard. It was amazing. I've never been there, but I will be going now. Yes, good old. Well done. Get out there. If I can get you guys outdoors, I'll do it. The figure dressed as a salty sea dog took me by surprise. I thought it was you. But, uh, Martin, but he was scruffy old git. And he was very, very much past his prime and... Point taken. Uh, moving swiftly on. David Bologna again. One of those toolboxes at the start. Do you remember that? They were all lined up with um, people's names on them. One of those two boxes at the start might have been mine, but fate had it that year. I had an interview for an apprenticeship there, and then the defence cuts were announced by John Knott, and all recruitment was cancelled. Well, I'm blurred. That's how lives get changed, isn't it? Just like that. 
Now, David then goes on to describe Portsmouth and what's all the buildings are about and what's going on there. And I fully recommend that you read that. It's a kind of Andrew Merriman uh, description. Andrew does railways and David there has done the historic dockyard. Go and have a look at David's comment and read the whole thing. It's perfect. And talking about Andrew Merriman, who says he's got no real connection with the sea. He once dirty drowned and he's uh, not a sea person at all. And then, then he got on with You may be interested in my late father had a relative who was in charge of the Mumbles lifeboat that was wrecked at Skier Point on the 23rd of April 1947 when all the lives were lost. Wow. And the wooden boat was destroyed. Every lifeboat man's next of kin was given an ashtray from the remains of the lifeboat which is engraved with the details. Andrew gives a little bit more detail himself there. So Andrew's got no connection with the sea, only with uh, a lifeboat disaster. I don't know. I'll put that down as a connection, Andrew. Right, Simon the Hairy Dog Golfer. We'll give him the last word today. Simon the Hairy Golfer. Be watching his Thailand videos. Oh, very good. Just one point about the video today. That staff destroyer. Was it turned off because I could see it? <laughs> I don't think it works like that, so. <laughs> oh dear. Moving swiftly on, Film Club. Uh, film Club, I've done um, a sunset over the floods. We get lots of floods around here. Uh, and I went out one evening, looked like a good prospect for a sunset to see what I could get. So it's a little bit like uh, a contact strip when photographers go out filming, take loads and loads of photographs in a strip, and they'll pick out the ones that they want. So this is a little bit like that. Uh, you're good in there. I must remember reading that uh, one of the photographers doing calendars, one of the famous photographers, took 1,300 shots to get 13 shots, one for each month and a cover. 1,300 to get 13 shots. Blimey. Next week, Severn Rail Bridge crossing. Ah, railways then, railways. Andrew picks his ears up. Right. Uh, we all know the story of the uh, Severn Rail Bridge that got hit by two barges and uh, knocked down, never repaired again. And it, the whole thing in the end was uh, dismantled, destroyed or whatever. But I understand there are some bits that you can get to. And we're going to have a look on the west shore just to see if we can dig anything up. I mean, it was a huge structure. There ought to be something left there, didn't it, really? It's only it's a foundation. So we're going to take a look at that. So I'll see you down there then next Friday. Don't be late. This is the River Severn. Well, you have to say it's in most of the fields at the moment. That's looking south. We have had a drop of water about. It's gone down a bit to what it was. It's uh, 16th of January at the moment, 2014. So we'll go and wander around and see if we can see any pretty pictures. It's quite a nice day. That's looking south towards Gloucester north towards Tewkesbury. The river here is flowing quite quickly. And it's also in the fields over there and over there. Pretty much everywhere to be honest. That's actually a field, not a lake. So I suppose that's debatable. This looks a little bit like the um, American swamplands around here at the moment. Trees growing out of the water. There's some reasonable reflections. The wind's up a little bit to what it was this morning. I should have listened to my wife and come out then. Mind, I think she was just trying to get rid of me. I bet the people in that house get a bit nervous this time of year. This is when they find out why the place was cheap. One of these pictures has to work out, has to look good. What about that one? Okay, time for a change of location. Go and have a look uh, around somewhere else. Don't think we'll be going that way. 
as you can see, I've got Pauline's car. I thought if we get stuck in the floods, at least it won't be me who ends up having to walk after that. I can't seem to be getting away with it. Just outside Turley. Slightly damp, as you can see. I don't think we should be getting very far. That'll have to do. I bet they're not sad it stopped raining. I don't know if that's a pretty sight or not. <laughs> Depends on your point of view. Well, you want to get to the church is not very pretty. Another perspective. Some rather nice reflections coming through there. Pretty. Another contender for picture of the week. Or that one. What about that one? I've just spotted that my stills camera is in macro mode. So I've just had to go round and redo a whole load of shots. I have to say it, uh, it does uh, explain the rather poor results. Right, the plan today is to get the sunset, which may or may not oblige. That's, that's looking south. And I have to say it's got a little bit chilly at the moment. I suppose this time of year, clear sky, that's what you're going to get. Let's have another change of scene now. Entrance to Wayne Loads. Well, right, he's standing on the road. You can see there's rather a lot of water lying about. That's looking back towards the main road. Where there are cars and cars and cars. And on the opposite side of the road, more water. Now that really does look like the American swamplands. And we don't get any alligators come charging across the road. Can't be going through there. There's a little bit of yellow in the sky, in the sun. We might be in with a chance of a sunset. Mind you, it could still dive behind a cloud at the last minute. It's not a done deal just yet. They don't look very happy with their uh, feet in the water, but I suppose if we had to stand there with our feet in the water for a long time, we wouldn't be very happy either. The light on the car is now telling a story. There it is. The wind has dropped at the moment, so it's quite warm right now. And we're looking for the shot that makes a difference. Down there, up there, uh, too much sky, down there. Could be. Now, oh, it's coming to the end. Not bad. Trouble is, I find it very hard to go and leave a sunset. They've obviously had enough for going home. So many phases of a good sunset. Isn't that beautiful? The birds are all settling down for the night. They've gone home. Perhaps it's time I joined them. A last look. Tranquil. Quiet. Peaceful. Right. That's the sign to stop. Sorry about that. 